Hi friends. I'm back at the Land Lab today near Granville Intermediate School. This was once an agricultural field and now it's a biodiverse ecosystem of prairie and wetlands. There are hundreds of species who live here and one of them is the American mink. Now I don't know about you but the first thing that I think of when I think of mink is fur coat. <laughs> mink have soft, thick, shiny, dark brown fur and it's considered to be one of the most luxurious furs on the market. Originally, all fur came from wild mink, which endangered the species. But in the mid-1900s, mink ranches were established. By the mid-1960s, there were 7,200 ranches in the United States. Now that number has declined over the years, but ranching is still the primary source for pelts. Most states limit the number of wild mink that can be caught in order to protect and to limit the population. Speaking of the states, mink live in every state of the United States except Arizona. <laughs> the biggest threat to mink besides poaching is pollution and the loss of habitat. They depend primarily on wetlands for survival. They have partially webbed toes, which makes them excellent swimmers, and they can swim up to 100 feet in the water in one breath. Depending on the season, mink eat muskrats, mice, rabbits, ducks, fish, crayfish, and frogs. A photograph of a mink eating a bullfrog was captured here at the land lab. And it's one of only two such photographs that have been captured since 1943. Mink are mostly solitary animals. They are cousins to the skunk, and like the skunk, mink release strong smelling substances from scent glands. They don't spray like a skunk, but they stink like one. <laughs> they use the scent to mark territory, to deter predators, and believe it or not, to find mates. That got me to thinking about how we use scent to make ourselves more attractive. At the very least, I hope all of us use deodorant. <laughs> but then there's perfume and cologne and lotion and aftershave and soap and shampoo and laundry detergent and fabric softener. Scent is an important part of how we present ourselves to others and how we relate to each other. The Apostle Paul writes in the second letter to Corinthians 2, 14 through 15, But thank God, who is always leading us around through Christ as if we were in a parade. He releases the fragrance of the knowledge of him everywhere through us. We smell like the aroma of Christ's offering to God, both to those who are being saved and to those who are on the road to destruction. God releases the fragrance of the knowledge of God through us. We are the aroma of Christ in the world. Now, I love that image, but it's not all lavender and roses. Paul goes on to say that to those who are on the road to salvation, the aroma is sweet. But to those who are on the road to destruction, it's an awful stench. Our job is not to try to force or coerce people to like our smell. We can't control how other people perceive it. Instead, our job is to be sincere and to speak and act in the pattern of Christ. Our best witness to others is not theological arguments or biblical scholarship or doctrinal standards or strict legalism. Our best witness is sincerity of faith, evidenced in the ways that it wafts through every ordinary aspect of our life, like peace in the midst of stress, joy in the daily routine, hope in the face of sadness and fear, and love even in disagreement 
and division. <laughs> yep, I can smell it. You smell just like Jesus. Thanks for listening. I'll see you again tomorrow.